State your name, soldier. Private Augustus Cole. <clears throat> As in the cold train? Stay cool, baby. Yeah, that's right. Back to your home, bitch. What's up, ladies? Man, that was nasty. I think when people hear remaster nowadays, they, th they think of just up the textures, just making the textures, you know, sharper. And we really focused on kind of remaking the game rather than remastering the game. We went down to just the dialogue and the cinematics. So all the cinematics are all brand new. Uh, we changed how matchmaking works, and now we're at 1080p and 60 frames per second in multiplayer. Uh, you know, we brought a lot of Gears 3 features and put them into the Ultimate Edition, so you get like the ability to spot and, and those sorts of things. So I think it's just, it feels like a different game, but it has that nostalgia of, oh, I know the story and I, and I love these characters, but it, uh, the, but there's so much different that it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm just playing a rehash. Like, it, it, it feels new. Oh, man, that was nasty. I want it to kind of continue to, to just grow as a franchise and a brand. I mean, I think there's, you know, one of the things we really focused on was trying to be true to Gears of War. You know, that there's games like out there like Call of Duty that's having huge amounts of success. And so a lot of people talked about, oh, maybe we should start changing Gears of War. We should make it more like Call of Duty or more like other games. And it, that didn't feel true to me, you know? And I feel like one of the reasons that Gears has the success it has is because it's different than those games. And so. For us, it's more about accentuating the differences than it is to kind of follow. And so that was the big thing when I joined the coalition was to, to talk about lead, don't follow. Find where Gears of War can own something and lead with it rather than following somebody else's path. And that's kind of what I want for the for Gears of War is to have success in its own uh, on its own terms in the sense of have success with monsters and have success with chainsaw guns and have success with these characters in this world. So, um, you know, and then, and hopefully now that it's a Microsoft property and, and, and we have opportunities now to kind of broaden that. So maybe that means sort of other products beyond the, the console game or more linear storytelling, whether that be books or comics or movies or whatever. I, I'd like to find a way to, to expand the brand, expand the franchise beyond just the console game every few years. Just a little time out, I'm back in the game. Who loves you, baby? Stretch. I just want to, I mean, we're, we're, we're changing a lot, right? And so that was one of the things that, like, we had, we did, we did almost too good of a job of ending Gears 3, you know, in the sense that we, we thought Gears 3 was the last one we were going to yeah, make. And so, <laughs> yeah, and so we, we, we made sure it was, had a really solid, hard ending to it. Um, and so as we came back to Gears 4, that was something that was the biggest topic of conversation is like, where do you, you know, where do you put it? And like, like, where does it take place? And when does it take place? And who are the heroes and who are the villains and all that stuff. And so there was a lot of opportunity and it was great from a design perspective that we could do almost anything. But um, the hard part is doing having that much freedom but at the same time being true to what fans want from a Gears of War game. And so that's been sort of the biggest risk for us is that, you know, I, I, I call it betrayal of expectations. Is that if you don't betray a player's expectations enough, then they go, oh, I've seen this before, it's boring, I've already done that, why would I play it? And if you betray their expectations too much, they go, this isn't the game I wanted, this is not Gears of War. And so for us to have to reimagine the franchise in a way and do it in a way that doesn't betray expectations too much uh, has been really tricky. So what I'm hoping that comes out of Gears 4 is that people feel that we were successful in finding a way to kind of take it to a new place, but yet still stay true to the original. Oh, man, that was nasty. One is, uh, well, I think, so to, you have to understand wall bouncing. So there's a notion of uh, 
being able to get in and out of cover very quickly and people use it for mobility. Uh, and so if you want to be really, really good at, at um, Gears of War multiplayer, uh, wall bouncing is really important. Understand that how quickly you can move. The same thing with the Nasher. We're getting really good with the shotgun. A lot of people, the most popular weapon in multiplayer is the shotgun. Yeah. Um, so getting familiar with that. Um, communication, like that's the big thing, right? Especially going back to the Ultimate Edition where it's four on four. Like, I don't think of it as an individual multiplayer game the way that some people play for, you know, if you jump on a 12v12 game or whatever, like your participation is there, but it's not necessarily felt. Um, when you're playing 4v4, every life matters. Like when a 4v3 becomes hard and 4v2 near impossible, right? And so the teamwork that's involved and the ability to work together. So there's, there's both communication aspects and kind of stick together aspects, right? Um, Using cover is really important, and uh, let's see, of a fifth. Um, I think the big one, hmm, I mean, it, it's using, well, one of the things that people don't necessarily know is about TACOM. So TACOM is that left bumper that kind of tells you where your teammates are and tells you where all the weapons are on the map. And so if you're on a new map or you don't know necessarily where to go, use TACOM, uh, and that'll reveal that to you, and you can kind of get up to speed faster. But what's great is as part of the beta that we did for Ultimate Edition is actually on our GearsOfWar.com website, we actually have a tutorial about here's how to how to do how, from professional Gears of War players. So don't listen to me. Go to GearsOfWar.com, uh, listen to them, and hear straight from the professionals and and they'll do a much better job I'm sure <laughs> this is the kind of shit. the one and only baby